Hello everyone. Today my work went quite smoothly. I have some free time, so I made this video to share with you how to power up an ECU and how to check whether the ECU is working or not. At first glance, this may seem like a simple step, but for those who are just getting started with ECU systems, it's actually not simple at all. Even for me, with many years of experience in the field, when facing a new type of ECU or working on modern vehicles, this step can still be tricky and take some time to figure out. Normally, in our repair work, whenever a customer brings in any kind of electronic control unit, like an ECU, the very first thing we always do is supply power and test the unit. We need to check the actual condition of the ECU. Is it truly faulty or did another shop misdiagnose the problem? Even when we're sure that the ECU is damaged, the first step is still to find a way to power it up. Of course, different types of ECUs from different manufacturers and for different car models will all have different power wiring diagrams. So to supply power to an ECU correctly, uh, you need to know how to find the right wiring diagram. So how can you find the diagram? Start by looking at the part number on the ECU, then search to find out which brand it belongs to, what model vehicle it's from, and what year it was produced. That way, you'll be able to find the most accurate diagram. Alternatively, you can also look at the vehicle registration or inspection documents because they usually contain all the technical information you need. Uh, if you only have the part number, you can always ask Google for help. Regarding wiring diagram software, there are many different options. Each region or country often uses different tools, so it's best that you explore what's available in your own area. But here are some popular ones I can suggest. All Data, Auto Data, GDS for Hyundai and Kia, TechStream for Toyota and Lexus, Consult 3 for Nissan, HDS, Honda Diagnostic System. Now let's move on to the main part of today's video. In the previous video, I showed you how to build a universal power supply to help you get familiar and start practicing with ECUs. If you haven't watched it yet, please check it out. I'll leave the link down below in the video description. That power supply was designed based on the real world working principle of an engine control ECU. So today I'm going to guide you using an actual engine ECU. In terms of principles, all ECUs, no matter which car manufacturer they come from, basically share the same general working concept. Today, I'll be using two ECUs from Kia and Hyundai as examples. One is a working ECU and the other is a faulty one. That way you can observe more clearly and better understand the differences between a good ECU and a bad one. Let's begin by supplying power to this small ECU first. To power up this small ECU, the first thing we need to do is to find the correct wiring diagram for it. The ECU I'm using here has the part number ME17.9.11. This type of ECU is commonly found in Kia and Hyundai vehicles. For example, Kia Forte, Serato, and K3. From around 2011 to 2016, depending on the model and market. Today, I will use the wiring diagram from a Kia vehicle as our example. First, open your wiring diagram software. Select the brand Kia, then choose the correct vehicle model and year of production. After that, go to the section called Engine Electrical System, and then choose MFI Control System. This ECU runs a 1.6 liter gasoline engine, type G1.6 DOHC. So that's the engine I'll select from the menu. Now, let's take a look at the first page of the wiring diagram. Here, you can clearly see the shape and layout of the ECU connector pins. Compare it with your actual ECU connector. If it matches, then that means we are looking at the correct diagram. On this page, the pinout of each ECU pin is also clearly labeled, so you can easily identify the power pins and the ground pins. For example, pins 3 and 4 are ground GND. Pins 5 and 6 are power after the main relay, labeled engine control relay on power. P3 
pin 18 is the IG power input on start input. Pin 30 is the relay control pin labeled engine control relay control. You'll also see some CAN lines in the diagram, but here we only use CAN C because it is a high-speed communication line specifically used for engine systems. Next, let's, let's go to the page showing the overall engine control system. This page includes sensors, injectors, and other related components. The following page shows the power supply through the main relay. Here you'll see pin 30 is for relay control, pins 5 and 6 are power lines after the relay contact. The next page shows the ignition power circuit, also known as hot in on or start. Here we see pin mate Dean is the IGN on start input. Pin 73 is the check engine light signal. Uh, this signal goes to the dashboard to turn on the warning light and on our, our power supply unit, we also have this signal pin available. And finally, the ground pins are clearly marked as pins thigh 4 and 77. So now that we've found the correct diagram and identified the key power and ground pins, let's, let's go ahead and start supplying power to this ECU. This step is very important. You must be extremely careful Make sure to provide the correct power supply to the correct ECU pins. Just one wrong connection could immediately damage or burn your ECU. So, let's carefully compare the actual ECU pinout with the wiring diagram to understand the correct layout and plug in the connector properly. If you plan to use a diagnostic scanner to connect to the ECU, then you should connect both CAN lines. But today I'm not using a scanner, so I won't connect the two CAN wires. After plugging in all the wires to the connector, you should double check everything carefully to make sure there are no mistakes or missing connections before supplying 12 volts to the ECU. According to ECU operation principles, when all three power sources, BAT, IG, and GND are present, 
the ECU will begin to operate. It will send a control signal to switch on the main relay. Once the main relay is turned on, it will supply power to important components of the engine control system, such as sensors, ignition coils, injectors, or even systems like the smart key. Getting ready for engine start by the driver. Now, how do we know if the ECU is working? First, you can look at the check engine light signal. This only applies to ECUs that send the check engine light directly to the dashboard. If your ECU communicates through the CAN network, then it won't have this direct signal for us to observe on the power unit. Second, based on the operation principle, when we turn the key to IG, the ECU will command the main relay to turn on, and when we turn off the key, the ECU will continue running for a short time to store operating data before shutting down completely. Based on that behavior, we can observe the main relay light on the power supply. If, when turning on IG, the main relay doesn't switch on, or when turning off IG, the main relay turns off immediately, then the ECU may be faulty. On the other hand, if, after turning off IG, the main relay stays on and then turns off after a short delay, depending on the ECU type, that means the ECU is working properly. For example, here, the ECU I'm testing, after I switch off the IG power, you can see the main relay is still on. Let's wait for a moment. There, the relay just turned off. That tells us this ECU is working very well. Now, I'm going to test a faulty ECU so you can clearly observe the issue. We'll also look up the wiring diagram to identify the correct power supply pins. This ECU has the code M7.8, which is commonly used in Hyundai vehicles such as the Accent, Verna, and Solaris from around 2006 to 20,000 
After checking the diagram, we'll proceed to supply power to the ECU. As you can see, when I turn off the IG switch, the main relay also turns off immediately. This is an abnormal behavior, and based on this sign, we can conclude that this ECU is faulty. So I've just shown you how to determine whether the engine control ECU is functioning or not, using the same ECU power supply unit that I guided you to build in the previous video. I hope that, that through this video, you've gained more useful knowledge, and more importantly, a better understanding of the function of the ECU power supply unit that we built ourselves. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it. Goodbye and see you in the next videos.